This video is a brief overview to drawing in the software. There are a number of ways to draw vectors and a number of tools to aid you in the drawing process. Here we are just going to go over the basics as an introduction to drawing in the software and many of the tutorials will teach you a variety of techniques in much more detail. We're going to use a file that I've created in the software to demonstrate some of the key concepts when drawing vectors. Now with any vector drawing exercise it's always good practice to review your snap settings to ensure that you are using the most efficient settings for the type of vectors that you're going to be creating. To access your snap options if you go to edit and then second from bottom we've got snap options you could also press F4 that's the keyboard shortcut to access snap options and that will open up the snapping options dialog box. So here we have various options to control the snapping in the software, which will ultimately help in drawing and aligning vectors. So let's take a look at these. So in the top left area here we have various check options to enable or disable general snap points. For example, we can snap to guides, we've got snap to grid where we specify a grid spacing, we'll talk about this shortly. We also have the option to snap to job centers and corners and all of these things are handy areas for us to be able to snap to. At the bottom here we've got the option to apply a fixed nudge distance and this is where we specify an exact distance in order for us to move things incrementally. And then we have what we call the snap radius. So this is how close you have to get to something before we snap to it. Now the default is at 10 pixels and if I use the uh, slider bar you'll see this circle there represents that uh, radius. So you can see we've got small radius is at 4 pixels so a very small radius there, large is at 16. We're just going to go with the 10 pixels in there. Then we have geometry snapping, so this allows us to snap to various points in our geometry, object centers, midpoints, intersections. And I'm going to show you some of these options shortly. And then we have what we call smart snapping. Now smart snapping allows us to snap to lines and extensions which don't necessarily exist as geometry. So you can snap to object bounds, horizontal vertical lines, tangents, and again we're going to look at all of these later on in this example. Okay, so we're just going to go with these settings, so everything is switched on here. We could just go ahead and press OK. For ease of use when working in the software, we have these toggle buttons in the view toolbar. This will enable us to switch on or off the geometry snapping, smart snapping and the snap grid. At the moment, they're currently all switched on. We can see that because they're represented by a blue shading. And if I click on one of those, you'll see it's no longer shaded and it means that it's switched off. So we've just switched off geometry. Let's switch off smart snapping. We're just going to leave the snap grid enabled there. And we can actually see that grid in view here. Now in the snap options form we saw that we had a grid spacing of half an inch so between each one of these points is a distance of half an inch and we can change that by going back into the snap options form. We also spoke about guides, Okay, so to pull a guide out if I wanted to create a vertical guide I'd come over to this ruler over here and just click and then I could just drag a guide out like so. could also bring in a horizontal guide you can see I'm just dragging from the ruler here downwards. Okay, so to demonstrate some of the basic snap options, let's just use the polyline tool. Okay, so using the polyline tool, we're going to snap to the various points that we saw in the form there. Okay, so let's start with the snap grid. So snap grid enables me to snap to these various points. So you can see that we're getting that uh, dot highlighted there and you can see my cursors change it's saying that we can snap to this point in the grid in which case I could just simply draw in shapes like so you can also snap to guides we saw that in the form so I could just click and that will snap to the guide there we can also snap to the corners of our job like so so you can see that snap in here you can also snap to the center so over here I can see if I just bring my cursor over 
there we go we've got the vertical and the horizontal line that's telling me we are in the dead center of our workspace okay so let's just right click to come out of the polyline tool there and so you can see there there's many useful points that we may want to snap to when creating vectors in our job so let's just take that vector and we're just going to press delete and we're just going to right click on this guide we're going to delete that guide right click on this guide here we're going to delete that guide and then we're going to come over to the view toolbar here and we're going to switch off the snap grid so I can click and you'll see it's no longer highlighted and we can no longer see those points within our job space there so now we're going to switch on geometry snapping which is this icon here we're just going to click that on and we're going to look at some of the geometry snapping options and again we're going to look at using the polyline tool to demonstrate the geometry snapping so we saw in the form that we can snap to object centers for example if I wanted to snap to the center of the circle I could simply just run my cursor and you'll see there that it's snapping to that point so I could just simply click there and we've just created a point in the center of this circle we can also snap to span end points so for example this vector at the bottom right hand corner here if I can bring my cursor close enough you'll see that we're now snapping to the end point of that vector and I can click that in place and it will put that point in at the end point of that vector there we can also snap to span midpoint so if I just run my cursor along this vector here we should be prompted with the midpoint okay so we can see that there the cursor's changed same we found the midpoint of this span we can snap to it if we want to in this case we do so we're going to click that in place we can also look at finding arc centers Okay, so I know we've got an arc here, so if I just bring my mouse somewhere around here, you'll see that we are able to snap to the arc centre there. You'll also notice that my cursor isn't exactly on the point where the arc centre is, and that's all down to the snap radius. So we're just close enough that we can still snap to it. So I could just simply click that in place, and we've snapped to the arc centre there. We can also snap to intersections. So if I bring my cursor back up over here, you'll see that it's snapped to the point where we're actually intersecting that vector. My cursor's changed, and I can click to accept that. So there's lots of helpful points there for me to snap to to create accurate geometry. So let's just right click to come out the polyline tool. And we're just going to take that vector we've just created, and then we're just going to press the delete key to delete it. So let's look at switching on the smart snapping. So we're going to come over and we're just going to switch that on. We can see it's now highlighted. We know that smart snapping is now enabled. Now smart snapping is a very powerful tool that allows us to snap to lines and extensions which don't necessarily exist as geometry. And so it allows us to create very accurate vectors and really just minimizes the need for us to create construction geometry. So again, to demonstrate this, we're going to go into the polyline tool. So we're going to start by just rolling the mouse over some of the objects just to wake the vectors up. For example, I'm just going to run my cursor over this square and I'm just going to come out there. Okay, so you can see we've picked up a line here. Now this is a blue line and we have an S next to our cursor. So that S represents the smart snapping. Smart snapping is found an object bound, so the blue line is an object boundary. So we've found the left hand side of this square here and I could run my cursor along this line to create a new shape that's in line with the left boundary of the square that we've got. I move my cursor over to the right here you'll see now we are presented with a blue line that runs through the center vertically of our square so it's found the center part of the object bounds of that square again I could run my cursor along it to create a new point that's in line with the center of the boundary of the square that we've got over to the right you'll see that we found the right hand side we found the bottom of our square there found the center horizontal of our square and we found the top bounds of our square there so this is very useful if you're wanting to create shapes that are aligned to 
the boundaries of particular vectors that you may already have. And so we could look at waking up more vectors here. So I could take this one, and if I wanted to, I could follow the object bounds for the top of that vector and then find the left side as well. So I can see that point there, and I can click to input a place and begin drawing a vector. So here you can see now that we're now presented with a horizontal line, just makes it really nice and easy for me to draw straight lines by following the horizontal extension there. And then I could just go up if I wanted to, and you'll see now we're presented with a vertical line. Um, and I could click to input that in place and I could choose an angle line here so you'll see that we are presented with various angle lines so you saw in the snap options form we can change the increments um, and so our snap angle increments in this session is at the default of 15 degrees so I can move this in increments of 15 degrees and it will enable me to snap to that Okay, so you can see that 45 degree there. I'm just going to run that along until I find the center object bounds of the vector that we're currently creating, which is right here. So I can see that there. So I can click to that point and then I could come down at a 45 degree angle. Okay, and so you can see we're just following that line and presented with the right hand side object bounds so I can complete the house shape by just clicking and then I could just bring that down click that in place and we've created that shape thanks to the various object bounds horizontal and vertical and angled lines that are available to me using this smart snapping so let's just come out of the polyline tool we're going to take that vector delete it and then we're going to go back in and look at some of the other snap options that are available to us in smart snapping now smart snapping allows us to pick up tangent lines so let's wake up this circle over here okay so we've woken that circle up and then if i just move my mouse you'll see here that the software's found a tangent line there we've got an s next to our cursor software's way of telling us smart snapping has found this tangent line and if i wanted to i could click to follow that line and just click that in place and we can also pick up lines that are perpendicular to tangents from nodes or midpoints for example if i drag this over you can see that we have displayed that right angle there and it's telling me that we've found a line that is perpendicular to that tangent. So let's just click that in place and then we're just going to right click to come out of the polyline tool and then we're just going to delete that and then we'll go back into the polyline tool to discuss one further option here and this is where we can look at finding connecting lines. For example the squares that you can see in the right hand corner if I wanted to create a point that is exactly between uh, one square and another square, I could do that by simply waking up one node here, coming over to this node here, and if I backtrack, you'll see now we're presented with an olive green coloured line here. So this is what we call connecting lines. So it's found a connecting line between two points. And I could follow that line and you'll see here we're displayed with the halfway point of those two lines and so I'm able to snap to that point and then I could go ahead and just continue to draw and if I wanted to find the connecting point between this node here we hover over it to wake it up this point here hover that to wake it up go back on ourselves we can see that connecting line and I could just snap that in place so a very handy feature that we've got there so let's just right click to come out of that. We're just going to delete that line. So the geometry and smart snapping tools are a very powerful feature for us to create accurate geometry fairly easy without the need to create construction geometry. We sit there, with, especially with the smart snapping, we can follow the extension lines or the lines that it will pick up for you that you may find useful. And not only can we draw with the help of the snap options, but we can also align objects to various points. For example, I could take this vector here and I could just grab it by the corner there and you'll see that I'm able to snap to the object bounds of 
the square at the top there so I could keep that in line there. We could also look at waking this circle up. You'll see here we're attaching that to the uh, right hand side of that circle, we could align it to the bottom of that circle and so on. So various different options here that we can use to align our objects accurately against other objects that we may have in the session. So now we're going to look at ways of drawing shapes in the software using the various create vector tools. We're just going to look at how to draw a circle in this example. So let's just go to our layers bar here. I'm going to add in a new layer. I'm just going to undraw layer one. I'm just going to work on layer two. So we're going to look at drawing a circle. So let's come over to the drawing tab under create vectors. I'm going to look at how we can draw a circle. Now there's lots of different ways for us to draw a circle. And in all of the create shape forms, so the ellipse, the rectangle, the polygon, and the star, they'll work in a similar fashion whereby we could specify where we want the center point of that object to be or the anchor point in various shapes. And then we can specify the exact size of the part and then when we press create it will create that shape. For example, in this circle here we could specify the center point. Okay, So here we're going to put 1.5 for x, for y, we're going to put 4 in there. And then we specify a radius or a diameter. In this case we're just going to go the diameter here and put in a value of 2 inches press create and it will create that circle based on where we specified the center point of that circle to go in our job and then the actual size of the part and here it's a two inch diameter circle. Another way we could do this is to specify the size of the part. So for example here I want to give this a radius of say half an inch and then I could come in to my job click in the space and wherever I click that will be the center point of my circle which has a radius of half an inch. Another way is for me to just freely draw a shape so I could specify where I want the center of my circle to be and then just click and drag in a shape and you'll see we'll be presented with the radius or if you had diameter as the last setting in the form it would present the diameter of the part so you could just freely draw that out. And another way that I can create a circle with an exact size and without having to go into the form is to use the transform shortcut keys. So to do this we simply come into our job space and we begin to freely draw a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle so my left mouse key is held down at this moment in time. And whilst my left mouse key is held down I want to go to the keyboard to type in specific values for either the radius or the diameter. So you'll see at the bottom highlighted that I'm typing in 1 and then when I press R it will create a circle with a radius of 1. You do that again so I'm going to freely draw a circle and then I'm going to go to my keyboard whilst my left mouse key is still held down and here I'm going to type in 2 so you can see that at the bottom there followed by D for diameter and that will create a circle that has a 2 inch diameter there. And then to edit a shape that we've already created whilst we're in the circle form, I could hold down shift to select that circle and then we could look at altering that by simply putting in a different value and you'll see it will change that there for us. And all the other create shape tools allow us to create the shapes in the many ways that we just demonstrated here where we can look at specifying the shape size and position in the form. We could just specify a size in the form and then click in the 2D view to create that shape. We could just freely draw out the shape in the 2D view. And we could also make use of the transform shortcuts to put in accurate dimensions without having to go into the form. And for more information on the different shapes transform shortcuts, please refer to the help guide for a list of shortcut combinations. And so that completes this short introduction to drawing in the software. And as I said, there are many tutorials that demonstrate a variety of techniques to drawing in the software, and a selection of those can be found in the related videos section for this tutorial.